Where is a missing autistic teen, Sebastian Rogers? The hunt is on for this boy. Did he wander away from home entirely barefoot? This as eerie surveillance footage emerges outside Sebastian's home, purportedly of two people with flashlights. What does that mean? I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us here at Crime Stories and on Sirius XM 111. First of all, listen to this. When I woke him up for school, he wasn't there. I took a second and walked through the house looking for him in case he'd gotten up and was trying to get breakfast or something because he did that sometimes. Um, about three minutes in, give or take, I was on the phone with my husband. I said, I can't find him. Um, he said, what do you mean you can't find him? I said, he's not in the house. You are hearing Sebastian's mother describing the moment that she realizes Sebastian is gone. Again, I'm Nancy Grace, and I want to thank you for being with us. The search for Sebastian is on. And let me, right off the top, give you the tip line, 615-451-3838. Repeat, 615-451-3838. Look at him. This boy needs our help. Where is Sebastian? Joining me, an all-star panel to make sense of what we know right now. But first, I want to go out to a very special guest. This is Sebastian's father joining us, Seth Rogers. Mr. Rogers, thank you for being with us. Could you recount for us when you learned Sebastian is missing? I know it just seems completely surreal. Son, there's no words for it. I mean, when I found out that he was gone, I was just like, I headed over to Katie's house, to see what was going on. And he's not here. I don't know where he's at. I've been looking for him every day. It's just. Seth, what have you been doing to look for him every day? And I know that to be true. You are looking for him every day. Guys, please look at Sebastian. This young boy is autistic. He may not, in a scared and emotional and lost state, he may not even be able to tell someone who he is and where his home is. He is out there lost and the Lord only knows where. Seth, what have you been doing to find Sebastian? Been handing out flyers every day. I've been on some podcasts. I've done some face-to-face -face interviews on the news. I'm just anything I can. I've been to the south side of Nashville. I've been to Franklin. I've been to Bellevue. I've been through Henderson. I've been through Gallatin. I've been through Clarksville. I've been through Oak Grove, Kentucky. I mean, I'm handing out flyers, finding out. I mean, just, I want everybody to, to see my son and know that he's missing and that if you see him, Call 911. I need my son back. You know, I'm just trying to get my mind around what you and Sebastian's mom are going through because when I go in to wake up my twins, if they're not in the bed, which is rare, they're usually still asleep, if they're not in the bed, I immediately glance in the bathroom, and if they're not there, that's totally out of character. They're always right there in their bedroom in the morning when I wake them up. And that would be totally out of the normal if they weren't there. Tell me your understanding of what happened. Katie told me that she when she woke up Monday morning that he wasn't in his room and she can't find him. And I heard that once I got there. When I got off of work, I had a text message from the stepfather, Chris, and a missed phone call, and I called him, and he told me that Sebastian was missing, and he didn't know what had happened. So I had I had. Okay, let me ask a couple of quick questions, Seth. Number one, is there any type of a burglar alarm in the home? 
I don't know. I don't live there. Okay. Okay, that is not helping me. Let me see if I can find that out. I'm going to go to Aaron Cantrell on that from News Channel 5. So we don't know if there's a burglar alarm. Was a window open in Sebastian's home, in his room? Not that I am aware of. Well, Nancy, we, okay. we don't know. We do know that they did search uh, the perimeter of the house. And I know one day when I was out there, when they were searching, they had a dive team out there. They were searching the grounds. But the area is very, um, it's, some parts of it is very rural and they're doing a lot of construction around the area so there's a lot of construction lots of subdivisions being built in that area and like you mentioned earlier um uh, the flashlights in the backyard that was a very common area where people could potentially be walking but it is odd at that early in the morning that there were two flashlights in considering that's what detectives are saying that they believe that sebastian left the home barefoot with the flashlight so that is very odd but as you can see in these pictures here it's a very rural area they've called in teams from across tennessee i mean they've gone as far east as far west bringing in different units to come search the property they've drained ponds they're looking everywhere and I, they've searched about a 10 mile radius for in thousands of miles just going back and forth back and forth until unfortunately they had to scale back that search so seth what time did you get to the home that day i got the message at about seven twenty. i was there at about eight o'clock so immediately when you got to the home tell me about the state of the home the home was clean i mean it Looked like it normally did when I walked in. So were there any signs of a forced entry at the front or back door or, or on Sebastian's window that you could observe? No, there was none. Was anything back stolen from the locked. home? Not that I was informed of. Okay. Do you back know door. if there are burglar lights, motion sensor lights that would turn on if someone moved on the perimeter of the home? No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, I, I'm trying to understand his daily routine. Did Sebastian get up every morning and go to school? Yes, ma'am. What school? Beach High School. How far away? I think it's like 0. 0.6 miles. Six miles? Did you say six miles? Point. Point six. 0.6 miles, very close to home. Did he walk or take a bus or ride a bike? He rode, a bu uh, he rode the bus. He rode the bus. Is he mainstreamed? He is autistic. Is he mainstreamed with other students? He's in their Why We what? Try program. What is that? It's for, their, it's for the special needs children where they are doing the same tasks that the mainstream does but they get a little bit extra time. You know, if they have like 30 questions and then in the Why We Try program, they get like 20 and they get uh, extra time to answer them. So they're still learning the mm -hmm. same stuff. Okay, I I'm trying to understand. That morning, your wife calls you, your ex calls you about 7.20 a.m. Would that have been no. on a school day? No, uh, it was... It was her husband that called me. Okay. Was that at 7.20 a.m.? No, 7.20 a.m. is when I got to my vehicle because I got off of work at 7. My shift ended at 7. By the time I found out to make sure that I didn't have to stay over or anything, then I got to my truck about 7.20, and they had texted me and tried to call me on my cell phone at around 6.20. And you found out about it at 7.20, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rogers, did he go missing on a school day? From my understanding, she put him to bed Sunday night, and yes, Monday morning he's missing. Okay, so he's in his room Sunday night, Monday morning he's gone out of his home. Could you tell me the level of the severity of his autism? He's very intelligent. He's very smart. He just lacks social skills in reading of people's body language. Um, he likes things to be in a routine. He likes to control his environment. 
I am looking at Sebastian right now, and it is breaking my heart thinking of this young boy, this autistic boy, possibly out in the wild, possibly with strangers he doesn't know. What would his reaction be to that, Seth Rogers? I don't know because he's. I've never seen him have to deal with this. Most of the time, if he's with me, he gets his information from, from me about interacting with people. It, you know, if I sit there and I'm meeting new people, I talk to him. It's like, son, you can introduce yourself if you would like. If he does, he does. If he doesn't want to, I don't make him. Seth, when was the last time you can verify that he was alive and well? When I talked to him on Thursday. How often do you see him? I, I get to see him every other weekend. If he's on like a spring break or a fall break or, or he's got an extended time away from school for like school days. Uh, when we had the, the weather was bad out here and they canceled school, he was with me. Summer breaks. I get him whenever he's and not in school. Except Seth, for the week. Whenever you have the opportunity to be with Sebastian, isn't it true that you exercise that opportunity? You are with him every chance possible under the law. Yes, ma'am. Guys, I'm bringing in the rest of the panel. You are hearing Seth Rogers describe the moment. He gets off of work at around 7 a.m., gets to his vehicle and realizes his wife and the stepdad have been Thanks, calling gosh. and texting him. X, thank you. Uh, since around 6.20-ish a.m., it's on a Monday morning, to tell him his son, an autistic boy, is missing from their home. And from what I can tell right now, uh, you heard Aaron Cantrell jumping in earlier, and thank you for that, Aaron. Uh, please, don't hold back, Aaron. We're not having high tea at Windsor Castle. Aaron is joining us from News Channel 5 in Nashville. Aaron, thank you for being with us. I don't hear anything so far about a, a forced entry, about a window being open, about anything being taken from the home. I understand that the mother put him to bed at regular bedtime for school the next morning, and that around 6 to 6.20 a.m. Monday morning, she says she goes into his bedroom to wake him and he is gone. Aaron or Seth or anyone else, else on the panel, do we know that anything else was missing, such as his backpack, a cell phone, something he liked? Do we know anything about anything missing from the home? Anybody? His mother said his mother said that he's missing a keychain flashlight. That's that's it. His keychain flashlight. Interesting. Interesting, Seth Rogers. When I come in, I put my driver's license and credit cards, which are in a rubber band. That's my pocketbook. My, all of that and my key in a certain spot in the kitchen. Rarely do I put it anywhere else. This is what I'm asking, Seth. You told me that your son... Autistic boy, Sebastian, likes things in a certain way in a routine, like many of us. Would he have had that flashlight, and I believe you said keys, flashlight and key, keys attached to each other? It's a keychain flashlight. It's a flashlight that would uh, go on your keys. I bet he always put them in a certain place, didn't he? In my house, all of his stuff is in his upper drawer. When the police showed up at my house to look... Upper drawer, house key, wallet, everything's in his upper drawer. Uh, Aaron Cantrell, News Channel 5, yes. Nashville. Hold on just one moment. Joining me right now is an expert, a board-certified behavior analyst, an autism expert, chief clinical officer with Little Stars Therapy Services. Courtney Lasky, thank you so much for being with us. Isn't it true that autistic children like many of us, like things to be in a certain order uh, for many, many varied reasons. If this was missing from Sebastian's home, I would venture to hypothesize he took it with him. Correct. 
Yes. And, you know, without knowing Sebastian personally, I can't make any assumptions about his behavior, but knowing that this was not a typical history for him to wander, to leave the house in the middle of the night, um, it is interesting that he did leave with that keychain flashlight. You know, another thing, uh, which is quite the dichotomy, Courtney Lasky, and I'm going to throw this to you as well, Seth Rogers, if he was in such routine as I believe he was due to his circumstances being autistic, why would he have left without his shoes? That is not his routine. This is not a child that leaves a home without his shoes. First of all, Seth, how do I know he didn't have his shoes? Three pairs of shoes were at the front door. His old tennis shoes, his new tennis shoes that his mama had just bought him, and the boots that I had just bought him. His he mama had told me wore another set of shoes. Had, his feet were growing. The last time I had him for that, the, the last weekend I had him, his mom had told me that his shoes weren't fitting anymore. And she asked me to get him shoes. And we wanted a pair of boots, so we went to Boot Barn and got him a pair of boots. Is it possible he wore a different pair of shoes? I don't think so, because if he's not fitting into them, she gets rid of them. Okay, let me tell you something, uh, Seth. My son and daughter have one of those she racks over the back of their closet door. And I would see, I see those closet doors 10 times a day. I would see if shoes were missing. I would know that. There's no shoes and in his I'm, Okay, there's my answer. He left shoes, without his shoes on. Shoes get taken off at the front door, same as my house. Same here. I always have people take their shoes off at the door. Just habit. So there were no shoes in his room. All his shoes were still sitting at the door. Can we confirm that, Seth? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Guys, you may think, why is she asking and asking and asking about the same thing? I'll tell you why. Behavioral evidence. Evidence of routine. Uh, hold on, Courtney Lasky, because this uh, touches on you as well. Dr. Sherry Schwartz is with me, forensic psychologist specializing in victim advocacy at panthermitigation.com. Dr. Sherry, thank you for being with us. Dr. Sherry, when I say routine evidence, I don't mean mundane evidence, just you know the regular evidence. I mean evidence of routine. For instance, if I came and sat down in this chair in this studio and Jackie was not right there, she would either be dead or on the way or in the hospital, period, because that's her routine, right? So this autistic child would not have left in the middle of the night without a pair of shoes on, and that is telling me something probatively. It proves something to me. What do you think of it, Dr. Sherry? I agree completely, Nancy. I actually saw an interview that uh, Mr. Rogers gave about this particular issue and how when he was younger, Sebastian, he stepped, he went outside barefoot and he stepped into an anthill of fire ants. And so dad doesn't believe that he would go out barefoot. And so this is, this goes to that behavioral evidence that you're talking about. This is another fact that's very important that we need to pay attention to because this is not something that Sebastian would normally do. And we know this because he's had a prior experience. So these are really important cues in an investigation like this. Dr. Sherry Schwartz, a lot of people may think that means nothing that I can't find his shoes, but it means a lot to me. And I guarantee you, it would mean a lot to any mother or father hearing this evidence. Seth, what does it mean to you? Was he prone to go outside and wander around at all, period, uh, number one, at night, in the dark, number two, and without his shoes on, number three? Would he ever have done that, Seth? From my, No. I mean, the only time he goes outside at night at my house is to put the trash in the trash can, which is right outside my front door. That's it. You know, I'm very curious about this. And one more thing, while it's on my mind, does he have social media, Seth? No, he does not. Okay, good. I can rule that out, or at least we don't think he does. Does he have a cell phone? He does have a cell phone. Where's the cell phone? 
at his mom and dad, at his mom and stepfather's. So he didn't take his cell phone. Seth, is he like every other uh, uh, boy in America glued to his cell phone? Does when he, love he has his cell access phone? to it, he loves. What do you mean by that? When does he have access? When he has access to like YouTube and stuff like that, he is glued to his phone because he likes to watch videos about Minecraft and he likes to watch videos of people playing Minecraft. Okay, you do know that is social media because people can talk to each other on Minecraft. Did you know that? No, he I wa- didn't know that. I no, found what out. I'm about is the videos. He watches p- videos of people playing it on YouTube. Does he play it? I I think he has it for his Switch at at his mom's house, but he the does little, not. Yeah. And he's glued to that okay. all the time. We need a forensic search of that phone pronto, Seth, because uh, I find it very curious if he went voluntarily that he didn't take the phone with him, okay? Because it'd be a cold day in H-E-L-L that either one of my 16-year-olds would go anywhere without their phone. And it's not just them. I mean, everybody takes their phone with them everywhere they go. It's like their magic wand. You can't be without it. So I find it interesting. Did the mom have the phone put away? Could he have taken it with him? Most of the time I've seen the phone plugged in on the counter on the little bar in their kitchen. Okay, I'm going to Courtney Lasky joining us, uh, expert in children and teens with autism. Courtney, you've been listening. Way in. Yes, I absolutely agree with you, Nancy. This is a very unusual pattern of behavior that we're looking at. If this child has access to a cell phone, like you said, Minecraft is social media, YouTube is social media, anywhere that he would have access and the ability to talk with others. Um, My concern would be related to his autism diagnosis and that deficit in communication and understanding of social skills Um, Is it possible that peers at school or someone has contacted him through these gaming methods, um, bullying, peer pressure? Was he persuaded to leave perhaps um, from his mom's house in the middle of the night? I know that that you jumping in, Seth. Yes, ma'am. I know that his phone was locked down. He had no Internet access. He only had the ability to take pictures on his phone, text on his phone, FaceTime and telephone calls. Everything else was locked down on his phone. Have the police looked at his phone? Have they taken his phone to look at who he may have been speaking to? Yes, ma'am. Question, where is this coming? Where's this coming from, Aaron Cantrell, that people saw flashlights, uh, two people with flashlights around the property the night that Sebastian disappears. And I keep seeing in all the headlines uh, the night that Sebastian wandered off barefoot I don't think that's what happened. Mm -hmm. He's never wandered off before. What? Go ahead, dear. Yes, ma'am. Well, we know we got that video a little later. So we just got that video maybe and released it uh, within like the last week or so. But this is from just neighborhood video, like the ring doorbell cameras Um, in that subdivision from the reporting. There's not street lights there. So that's why it's so pitch black and it's so late at night. But you see those two flashlights. But what's interesting is where these lights are it's almost a common area so it wouldn't be odd if someone may have been out at that time walking their dog or something of that nature but the fact that sebastian did leave with a flashlight and there are two flashlights seen in that video and it is pitch black and very concerning uh, uh, put him up put him up why do you keep saying sebastian did leave why are you saying that would you go out in the middle of the night and leave without your shoes on i'm just curious would you aaron no, you make a good point. I would not leave without my shoes. I don't think he would either. Even more so because you're hearing Courtney Lasky and Seth Rogers state this boy is autistic. He doesn't think the same way we think. We have to try to think like him. He liked everything in a particular routine. His routine was he wore shoes every time he went out after the ant bed incident. Okay? So, no, why would he go missing? And let me ask you something else, Aaron Cantrell. Isn't it true that Emergency Management Agency Director Ken Widener has told us that the canines could not pick 
up a scent outdoors. Exactly. Um, they have not been able to pick up a scent. They had a false um, um, hit, but then that did not turn out to be anything because when this, when Sebastian went missing, it was kind of a warm day that first day. But after the next day of the search, it went extremely cold. It was rainy, which made it even more concerning because here you do, you have this 15 year old who has autism with no shoes on and, you know, maybe a sweatshirt and sweatpants, but it is now cold. So they were concerned about hypothermia as well. So a lot of factors kind of changed the search as well, um, but they have not picked up a scent at all. Uh, officials have now been able to analyze home security video from that Hendersonville neighborhood and discover signs of what may have happened to Sebastian. Two people near the family home, and as I recall, it was around 3.10 a.m. that Monday. 3.10 a.m. Who in the hay is walking around, two people, two flashlights, at 3.10 a.m., in that neighborhood, and coincidentally, it is the same time during which Sebastian goes missing, which leads me to our guest, Douglas McGregor, geographic profiler specializing in violent crime and missing people. You can find him at the Geo Profiler. Douglas, thank you so much for joining us. A lot's happening right here. No canine scent outside. No shoes. Uh, no break-in. No theft. The phone's still there. Weigh in. So if we look at if we look at each of these, the no shoes thing, there's a lot of autistic people who actually enjoy going barefoot. It, you know, it connects them with the earth. They like that texture, that feel. Uh, I mean, there's a whole campaign barefooting for autism. Um, so I, I know that, and I did okay, read the article. Okay, let me stop you right there, Douglas. Let me stop you right there. Seth Rogers, uh, yes, he's right, but does that have anything to do with Sebastian? Did Sebastian go barefoot outside? Was he part of Barefoot for Autism? Do you know? No, he's got a pair of slippers that he wears, so he doesn't have to put on socks and shoes. He puts those on if he's going to go out to the trash or check the mail and doesn't want to put socks on. Have you seen him since the ant bed incident go outside barefoot? No, not at my house. Okay. All right. Uh, back to you, Douglas McGregor. Go ahead. Uh, so continuing on with just how he left the premises, the other question I have is the, the wording in that law enforcement is giving out with regard to what he was wearing, the clothing, that he was in a black sweater and black sweatpants. How do, how do we know that? Did he go to bed in those in that clothing? Uh, how do we know he didn't wake up in the middle of the night and change clothing? I think the wording should be he may be in a black sweatshirt and sweatpants, or he may have those things on him if they are missing from his house. But we don't know that he left in those. Um, you know, that's a really good point, the, Seth Rogers. What about it? Is that what he slept in? How do we know that's what he was wearing? His mom said that he was wearing black leisure pants and a black t-shirt when she, when he went to bed. Guys, so I want you to hear what Eric Craddock, chief deputy of Sumner County Sheriff's has to say. Really wanted to come to the community and ask for your help. We need you to search your properties every day, morning and night. Uh, if there's a shed or a crawl space or up under your mobile home or a tarp that's in your yard, check it every morning and check it every night. <clears throat> Look for any details that something has been disturbed. Uh, if there's a shirt that was there today that wasn't there yesterday, notify us. You can really help us by searching your own property twice a day. Uh, like I said, we're operating under the assumption that Sebastian walked off, and we really need your help to ensure that he is uh, brought home safely. Did he? Did he walk off? If so, why are canines not picking up his scent? I can tell you this, uh, Seth Rogers, and to you, Douglas McGregor, the best witness I ever put on the stand and all the years I tried cases, and I don't mean shopliftings, I mean felony homicides, uh, violent crimes, was a dog. If the dog tells me the dog cannot pick up a scent, I believe the dog. So I'm having a hard time accepting what I'm hearing 
that this young autistic boy just wandered out in the middle of the night without shoes on. Okay, back to you, Douglas McGregor. Tell me more of your analysis. So looking at what the canines were able to pick up, those canines should be picking up multiple scents. Uh, and it's all based on Sebastian's routine activities. You know, does he go to a friend's house during the week? Does he go to the corner store? Does he occasionally walk to school, even taking the bus? Those canines should be picking up all those scents from that seven days past because canines regularly train from uh, a scenarios where someone's gone missing from one hour up to seven days and bloodhounds can pick up even longer than seven days. So those canines should be picking up scents. They should be tracking those scents and then ruling them out as a as an activity from the past that isn't associated with him going missing on that Sunday evening. Guys, we were just showing you an aerial sketch of a land fill search. There's nothing good about that. Seth Rogers, why have you been told that authorities are searching a landfill? They told me they just wanted to make sure that there was nothing there. Aaron Contrell joining me, News Channel 5 out of Nashville. Aaron, what can you tell me about this landfill search? Yeah, Nancy, so they had got a tip that potentially from the uh, the garbage workers that maybe the trash may have been off a little bit. So just what, following what, up on what, that what, tip. What, 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 what do you mean by that? You can't just, just throw the, a grenade into my mind palace and expect me not to follow up. What do you mean something was off? So basically the, the workers said, they, you know, they had the same garbage truck drivers that come to the house. And when they picked up the, the garbage can, it just felt more heavier than normal. Um, so they just said that to the uh, authorities. So just to follow up on that tip, they went out to the landfill to search because that's where the trash is taken. Um, there in Sumner County, they take it out there to Kentucky. Um, so just following up on that tip, that's what kind of led them out there because, you know, we're used to our garbage, you know, the same garbage truck workers coming out there. They know kind of how the trash usually feels every single day. So it felt a little off for them. So that's why they told that to the uh, authorities. So that's kind of what led them to the landfill to start um, looking around. Seth Rogers, have you been asked to take a polygraph? No. Would you be willing to take a polygraph? I volunteered. I'm glad to hear that. You know why? I hold every parent to the gold standard. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of Mark Class. His daughter, Polly, was uh, kidnapped from the home. She was horribly molested and murdered. When cops came, to, he, like you, uh, was separated or divorced from his wife and lived separately. You know what he said when they came at the door? He's like, take my fingerprints, search my home, search my car, search my office, do whatever you want, find my daughter, find who took my daughter, because it's not me. I'll take a Polly, I'll do whatever you want. And they did all of that. Of course, it wasn't him, it was somebody else. But that said, uh, has the mother and the stepfather taken a polygraph? I know the mom has. What? I said I know his mother has. So she agreed to a polygraph. What about the stepfather? I have no idea. Guys, there is a reward for information in the search for this little autistic boy. Uh, Aaron Cantrell, I want you to take a listen to what Chief Deputy Eric Craddock has to say. Listen. Last Monday morning at about 6.30, Sebastian was reported missing from his home. Uh, since then, we've conducted an extensive and, and exhaustive search uh, around the home, looking for any evidence, any trace of Sebastian. Um, at this time, the decision's been made to scale back on the ground search operations. Uh, let me be clear that this does not diminish our commitment to finding Sebastian. This is simply us transitioning from the ground search to the investigative side. Uh, we are still committed to finding Sebastian and bringing him home safe. We have no leads, no details to indicate that Sebastian is not alive. From what I know, 
I can tell you that at this juncture, the family has totally cooperated with police. I'm curious about these flashlights. Uh, back to you, Aaron Cantrell, uh, joining us from News Channel 5. Aaron, I, 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 I'm deducing, nobody's told me this, that the flashlights of apparently two people were seen in that neighborhood. Was it on Ring Cam? Yeah, they believe it's a kind of a neighborhood kind of video. So either ring or some version of that in the neighborhood, which I'm in a Facebook group called Finding Sebastian Rogers and neighbors have posted in there. Uh, like one neighbor said, if if he would have walked near their house, you know, you have those automatic lights that sometime come on, but that didn't come on. But in the video with the flashlights, you see two flashlights. That's all you can see because it's so dark. There's no um, street lights in the neighborhood, but you see two lights walking towards kind of a uh, to the, the right of the video. But then you see, I think it may be into a wooded area. And then one of those uh, lights, both those lights disappear. But then you see one person stay away, but then some other person or thing comes back into the the, 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 the camera. So that's kind of odd too, because you see two flashlights leave and then you see some sort of body of something of one person walk back through the camera. I, I'm curious, how close were the flashlights to their home, to Sebastian's home? Very close. So it's right by, kind of right behind the home, kind of in like a common area of the neighborhood. So, you know, like a subdivision, there may be kind of like a, some grassier area. Maybe people may walk their, their dogs, that sort of thing. Um, so it's kind of a common area, but very close to um, Sebastian's home. So these flashlights of, we think, two people were right behind Sebastian's home. Is that correct, Aaron? Yes. Okay. Are you also telling me that there are lights that come on automatically that are motion censored on Sebastian's home? That's what one of the neighbors alluded to in a Facebook post early on in the investigation. You know, there was a Facebook group started and, you know, right now it's flooded with a lot of individuals. But in the beginning, it was definitely more just family and neighbors. And one neighbor did mention that um, if he was to have walked by their home, their motion lights would have come on if he walked on the side of their home. So that was kind of odd, too, because that's why the neighbor said that was suspicious to her, because her light normally comes on if anybody walks past um, the home. And Aaron, those lights, the, the motion, the motion activated lights on Sebastian and the neighbor's home did not come on. No. Mm -mm. which is in the video when you see the flashlights, that's why all you can see are the two dots of the flashlight and you can't really see anything else. Aaron, this ring doorbell camera or uh, something similar, did it ever show those outdoor light sensors coming on that night? Not in that particular video. So that's the only video that we've been able to get our hands on. Um, authorities have said they've received several uh, uh, videos and uh, things of that nature um, sent into them. Um, but all they could confirm for us with that video was that was one of the pieces of evidence that they are looking at and they are aware of that video. Um, but they could have, authorities could have other videos that they're looking at, but that's the one that we've been able to get our hands on, which is just very odd considering, again, um, Sebastian, um, they have said that he uh, had that flashlight with him. Douglas McGregor, it grows curiouser and curiouser, to coin a phrase, because if he had walked out of that house, those motion sensor lights would have come on. But from what we can deduce, they didn't. Yeah, exactly. And I've seen the video. And my, my first question would be, let's just set aside the motion sensor lights for a moment. Who, who would he leave that house with if it wasn't one of the three parents? Who would it be? And those, you know, that would be the next step in the investigation at that point, looking at that video. And Seth, who can verify his last conversation other than the mom and the stepdad? What, he, was, he was at school on Friday. You spoke to him Thursday night. He was at school on Friday, correct? Yes, ma'am. So, 
I know he was alive and well, say, at 3.30 on Friday afternoon. Who saw him, other than the parents, from that afternoon, 3.30-ish, till we find out he's missing on Monday morning? I don't know who else. Seth. So I don't, I don't have know. any proof of life between Friday afternoon and Monday morning? I haven't been informed of anything. My only proof of life would be Katie, his mom. Okay, who is cooperating with police? Guys, I want to give you the tip line again. 615-451-3838. Repeat. 615-451-3838. Listen to Sebastian's mom, Katie. We love you so much, and we want you to come home, and you're not in trouble. I guarantee you he is loved, and trust me, the open arms are waiting for him to come home. From every parent to every family members to probably everyone in the community. But there's no malice that we just want our boy home. Bad. Bad <laughs> That is from WSMV4 uh, that also has the full discussion with Sebastian's mother, the full interview, WSMV4. To you, Seth Rogers, what are your final thoughts? I'm just looking for my son. I want him to come home. I need people to look at his picture. Keep your eyes open. Keep your head up. If you see him, please call 911. I need my son back. Do you think he left that home alone? I have no idea what to think. It's not like him. Seth, am I missing anything? I'm missing something. This puzzle just isn't making sense. There's missing pieces to it. There's there just really missing are. pieces. I've been following this search and I've and law enforcement has done a a thorough job of using different assets at their disposal. Uh, but the search needs to be expanded. The number one reason that autistic children uh, go missing are runaways, endangered, endangered runaways. Uh, and, you know, once that hits a certain point in time, statistically, it turns into a parent abduction is the number one leading cause. But Based on his age, they need to expand this search. Uh, where might he go? What method of transportation might he have? Uh, and they need to research everywhere that they've already searched within the, the five mile or 10 mile radius because autistic children, you know, they have a tendency to, to hide um, or avoid uh, s stimuli. So just loud noises in general, helicopters, sirens, people shouting, they may hide, they may seek out crevices. That construction site that the dog hit needs to be researched uh, thoroughly. Um, and, and this is something that not only law enforcement can do, but the, the, the parents can get together volunteer searches within the community to search these areas as well. Uh, hold on, let me understand something. Aaron, you told me that the dogs had not made a hit. Wasn't that a false positive at the construction site? Yes. Yes, ma'am. But still, it needs to be further investigated. You know, to, back to Seth, you keep saying that a piece of the puzzle is missing. Something is missing. It doesn't add up. What do you mean by that? Something, some, it doesn't add up. For him to break routine and to leave the house with no shoes, no socks on, no coat, something, something just doesn't make sense. Guys, please help us bring Sebastian home. This boy needs us. 615-451-3838. Goodbye, friend. Guys, thank you for watching Crime Online with Nancy Grace here on YouTube. To get the very latest, subscribe to Crime Online here.